In this video, we'll be showing you how to download data from a query in Snowflake and then sending that data in a message on Slack. Let's dive right in. Jumping in the Snowflake, we can see the query that we're going to run inside of Shipyard uh, to gain some data for a CSV. Uh, you can see we're just doing a simple select off from this uh, sample orders table uh, with some where filters in for total price, order date, and order priority. So let's jump over to Shipyard and see how we can download this query as a CSV. So into Shipyard, into the Fleet Builder, uh, we can search for our blueprint over here. So we'll search Snowflake, and you can see we have a store query, query results as a CSV. We'll click that, which will then create a vessel for us and also bring up the authorization guide. Um, is, if this is your first time using Shipyard or the first time using a Snowflake blueprint, I'd click that authorization guide to kind of show how you can get uh, the, the values that I'm going to input here in a second. So I'm going to close that for now. I'm going to name that vessel download file from Snowflake. Um, and then we'll go down here and we're just going to input all these values that we get from Snowflake from that authorization guide that I mentioned before. Um, so clicking for our username, grab our password, our account name, our warehouse database. We'll just use the public schema here. And then I'm just going to copy and paste that query that I, we looked at earlier inside of Snowflake to paste it in there. A local file name, so I'm just going to name this test.csv. Of course, as you're using this blueprint in production, you want to name those files more specific. Um, it's important that we we know that name, that the test.csv, because we're going to use that in our Slack blueprint in just a second. Um, we'll leave the folder name blank just for simplicity here, um, and then we want to include column names as headers. Um, so just real quick, also what you can do inside of Shipyard is you can set up notifications. Uh, you can set up who you want to email if if the vessel fails or after an on-demand run is completed. Um, and then you can also set up guardrails that can protect against the number of retries a vessel has, the time between the retries, as well as runtime cutoff. And then to exclude exit code ranges uh, for the more our more technical users, um, as you want to put those in there to your own blueprints or our blueprints. Um, so this blueprint looks, or this vessel looks good to run. So now let's add in our Slack uh, vessel here. So we are going to search our Slack blueprints. Um, and then we can see we have our blueprint that will send a message with a file. That's that's what we want. So we'll click that. Again, it's going to bring up the authorization guide. We'll close it now for simplicity's sake. Um, so we're going to name this vessel send file from Snowflake. Um, and again, we you can send you can send this file into a channel or or as a direct message. I'm going to send this as a direct message this time. Uh, so we'll skip the channel name, um, the user lookup method. We're going to just notify me of our message. We can say, um, here is your daily file. Uh, the file name, so that's what we referenced from before. So that's a test.csv. You can do a regex match as well if you'd like, but we're just going to keep the exact match here for simplicity's sake. Uh, we did not use a folder name. So the only authorization we have for Slack is the Slack token. I'm going to grab my Slack, to my Slack token and paste it in there. Um, and so now we can connect these two vessels together for our fleets. And so the last thing we want to do before we save and finish our fleet and then run it is we want to rename it. So we'll rename this to Snowflake, the arrow to Slack. Okay, so now we got everything set up. Um, so now we can click Save and Finish, which will take us to a screen that telling us that our fleet's been created successfully. And then we can click run your fleet to begin our on-demand run. So we're going to do that. Um, and while this is running, we can talk about how else you can run these fleets. So we have two other ways that you can you can do fleets other than on-demand runs. You can use our you can use our triggers. And under our triggers, we have both where you can schedule triggers based on um, you know once a month, once a day, uh, once a week, um, along with varying versions of those options. Uh, and then we can also do a webhook trigger as well, so that you can you can. Uh, you can kick off your fleet run um, with an API call as well, uh, which can be super helpful whenever you're uh, using different software to call these shipyard fleet runs. And so we can see now that the fleet is, is uh, completed running and ran successfully. We can click inside on the Gantt chart to see the output from that. You can see that it downloaded this uh, the, the query here and successfully stored it as test.csv. Um, and so you can see both of these completed running successfully. And now I can click into Slack. Pull Slack over, 
And you can see in Slack, it has a message that we said earlier, here's your daily file. I can click to download the file. It does that, it's gonna download. Uh, I can click to open that file just to see the data that's running. It's gonna open up in numbers here. Um, and you can see here's our, here's our order information that we got from Snowflake. If you have any questions about this solution or any other potential solution, use the link in the description to set up a time to chat with our team of data experts. You can go to shipyardapp.com to start building powerful workflows just like this for free. Want to see us tackle more solutions? Check out these related videos.